Okay, looks like we are live. Hello, everybody. My name is Bayzad. I'm Lisa. And we are here from Naked and Famous Denim, streaming live from the... What are we doing here? What are we doing today? Are we the... WD. The Intergalactic Planetary Headquarters of Naked and Famous Denim, right here in Yokohama, Japan. We are streaming live. Hmm. Here to talk to you guys all about raw denim, raw denim-related topics, denim-related topics, off-topics. Welcome. Yeah. yeah, whatever topic that comes up. Yeah, all, all the topics that come up. So, uh, welcome to the live stream. We are glad to have you here, all of our intelligent raw denim fans all around the world. Let us know where you are checking in from. We love to see that in the chat. Hit the like button to start. If you're starting now, hit the like button now. And uh, let's get this live stream underway. We're going to check in with the chat here, see where you guys are checking in from. We've got John McNutty. Let's go. We're going right now. Chris Griffin with an early comment. It's been a few weeks since I've caught the live stream, we've noticed. I'm checking in today with my Billionaire Boys Club Beeline Weird Guy. Very rare oh, wow. Naked and Famous Denim item right there. The Naked and Famous Denim Billionaire Boys Club Mark McNary Beeline Collection. That Only one gene ever came out in a weird guy. That's it. Fantastic. I hope you're enjoying them. Um, uh, Cheddar, Cheddar Buttersworth is checking in. I'm, I'm, I hear, I hear in some left hand twill, in sunny Van City. Welcome to the chat. Um, uh, uh, Mojo, uh, I bought some uh, hard and soft True Guys two weeks ago, but I still haven't worn them yet. It is a little sunny out there, a little hot. So maybe uh, some of the heavier denim options might be mm. uh, a bit a bit tough uh, right now. But mm. uh, don't worry, th those cooler temperatures are just around the corner. We're mid July at this point. You know, the way I see it is six weeks or six seven weeks until September. That's when those temperatures really start to drop. In Canada, the last week of August, I really feel like. Yeah, in Canada, August is not the height of summer. No. I feel like here, it's, it is the height of summer. Right now. It's really hot and humid. It's really hot yeah. this weekend. Yeah. I've, I've been I've been uh, wearing my Dirty Fade True Guys pretty hard, though. Mm. Without uh, without question, I, I, I will, uh, I'm pers persevering. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. A lot of a lot of uh, chat going on in the comments uh, in, in the chat section. I guess that's what it's for. Uh, Rice W five. Hello from Birmingham, UK. Great to see you as always. Uh, Brian H in from Pensacola. I'm assuming Pensacola, Florida. Uh, but yeah, welcome, welcome. Uh, Rice W five. Hello from Birmingham. Oh, I've said that already. Uh, uh, Gabriel Fisher, Wisconsin is in the house. Shane. Hello from Vancouver, Washington. Enjoyed some local Walla Walla onion rings. Uh, oh, onion rings. I'm presume Walla Walla is that a chain? Is that a gas station? Is it? I don't know. I don't know what a Walla Walla is, but let us know. I'd love to know. Sounds sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah, sounds fun. Um, uh, Nate Dog. All right, Nate Dog is in the house. Uh, hi from Cincinnati, Ohio. Welcome. Um, uh, uh, ben, Benj. Uh, sadly, uh, it's 110. It's just too hot here in Vegas, even for my new frontiers. 110 mm. is pretty hot. Stay. If you're Maybe in, a yeah. short weather. Yeah, might be short weather. Stay cool. Stay in some nice air-conditioned uh, rooms. We got uh, Ose Dwarf from, from Moscow. All right. Cameron Smith. Uh, no, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm still waking up, guys. Sorry, I'm reading weird things here. Garrett Smith says Cameron. Uh, I'm assuming Cameron is a place. Um, uh, Topher Cobra, happy birthday. See, I, I'm just reading things that I want to hear. <laughs> happy Denim Day. Why do you want to hear happy birthday? I just want to hear that. Who, whose birthday is it? Let us know. We'll shut you out in the yeah. chat. Happy Denim Day, everyone. I'm wearing my recently washed organic cotton selvage. They're so comfortable. Don't be afraid to wash your denim. This is a very good point. Don't be afraid to do that. Uh, Ian M. Howdy from Boone, North Carolina, USA, rocking the Heba Cypress today. Nice. Scratch and sniff Heba Cypress. Glad mm -hmm. to hear uh, that one's been worn out there in the chat. Pedro uh, DBZ, the Dragon Ball Z, sell, perfect selvage, enjoying some Cheez Its. Nice. All right. Everyone likes some good Cheez Its. You know I, I, what I used to destroy? Those Pepperidge Farms goldfish. 
Yeah, yeah. Those are I good. used to just destroy those. Yeah, I get a little bag of those. It was over in like ten minutes. Those oh, great. Cheez Its though. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't had one of those in a while. Uh, Juan Escalante, North Jersey, uh, and just got a pair delivered today of the Black Cobra Stacked Guys from okay. Essence. All right, fan from the Essence sale. All right, if there's an Essence sale going on, definitely check that out. Probably get some good deals out there. Abel S., welcome. Haven't seen you in a while. Hello there. Uh, Shane, it's a town in Washington. Walla Walla. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Sounds That's cool. A cute name. It's a very cute sounding name. Um, uh, hello from the mountains of Western North Carolina from an anonymous user. Welcome. Great to, g- great to have you here. Uh, Jenny Come Home says, Walla Walla, Washington. That just rolls off the tongue. Yeah. That Walla rolls Walla right. Washington. That's great. I feel like I've heard that, actually. Yeah. That's just a great sound. I'd, I'd love to be from there. Walla Walla, Washington. Sure there's a lot of good songs about Walla Walla, Washington. At least there better be. Shane, local burger chain called Burgerville makes Walla Walla onion rings. Okay. Nice. Good to know. Um, all right. Uh, Parker Madison, hi, everyone from Pennsylvania. Picked up a pair of the new Frontier Silvage the other day. Great choice. It's a great choice for the, for the heat. Um, Wait, remember earlier you read Cameron Smith? Yeah. And it was actually Garrett Smith saying Cameron. Oh, Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a Cameron Smith in the chat and Cameron a Gam- and a Garrett Smith. See, I'm just you made up a person a, and that person and it materialized. Existed. I what did I do? I manifested it. You manifested. Look at that. Cameron it Smith. works, everybody. Manifest all the things. <laughs> um, uh, uh, all right. Well, everybody, if I missed you, I still love you. Welcome to the chat, Charles. Just uh, I, I don't want to miss anybody. Charles C. Hi from Edmonton, and Slater Brown. Hello from South Georgia. USA. All right. I think I got everyone. If I miss you, Robert Eubanks, hello from Chicago. Okay. I think I, think I got everyone. Miss I miss some there. people. Okay, okay. But I still, yeah. anyways, it's okay. we'll do it. Um, welcome to Saturday here in Japan. It's uh, Friday evening for many of you. It's been a pretty busy week on our end. Um, you know, we got to relax a little bit uh, yesterday. We had a, a good friend of ours, Alex, from Blue Owl Workshop. He's visiting Japan hiking across Japan, incredibly, and uh, we got to spend a couple hours with him showing him around Yokohama. Uh, we got to go see the giant robot Gundam mm-hmm. at uh, the Yokohama Harbor there, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, but it was just fun talking denim uh, with a fellow uh, you know, industry veteran. He's been over there at Blue Owl for very, very, very many years, as long as I can remember. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of neat to talk about some of the some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes is very common, mm. uh, uh, you know, for, for many of us. Um, namely, somebody talked about it earlier, uh, don't be afraid to wash your jeans. Mm. Um, yeah, that, you know, it's kind of interesting that like that has become much more uh, accepted on our end. I think maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Well, not maybe, definitely 10 or 15 years ago, there was much more of a, um, the messaging around all of that was, no, you don't have to wash your jeans, never wash your jeans. I mean, I don't think we ever told people rules. I think our stance at Naked and Famous has always been do whatever you want to do. If you want to wash them, wash them. If you yeah. want to wear them, wear them. But, I mean, as a tip, if you want a high contrast fade, you probably want to hold off and wash for a while. Mm-hmm. But that's just a tip, like... That's only if you want to do that. Right. So, um, yeah. but yeah, there was a lot of messaging just like from the brands that you shouldn't wash it. And then, of course, the forums really perpetuated a lot of that stuff as well. And nowadays, like we're all just like, especially on our side, we're just like, wash your jeans. I think maybe because we're seeing and we've seen a lot of customer service related questions as to like, Hey, I haven't washed my jeans in nine months straight like you told me. And I'm, I'm like, I never told you that. Mm-hmm. But, of course, the messaging is out there. And now they're starting to rip. And I was told that these are more durable and yada, yada. And, like, I think a lot of, you know, bad information just kind of convolutes into that email. And then we have to be, like, we have to find a way to, you know, deliver some hard truths about that situation and also service that customer at the same time. You don't want to leave somebody hanging. Um, so, 
in that respect, I think we're all just trying to be like, let's put the good information out there. Let's look, it's okay to wash your jeans. It's okay to maintain your jeans. You know, the problem is, is that like, of course we talk about durabil durability and the longevity of these, these products, but people are comparing them very differently. Like if you wear your jeans for six or eight or 10 months straight every single day, no, no wash and you get a hole in them, which is inevitable people are comparing it to the jeans they had before where they're like, well, I had these jeans for three years and I never had a hole in them. I was like, yeah, that's because you didn't wear them every single day, day in, day out. Like yeah. your expectations aren't really, you know, being, you're not comparing the same thing. You're comparing time, but you're yeah. not comparing wears. Yeah. So, and a lot of people who don't like, like this, I, I actually didn't know this until I started working in denim is that like not washing actually weakens the fiber because there's bacteria that builds up and eats away the mm -hmm. fibers. So it's like, yeah, like when you wash some things, like you feel like you're putting um, the garment through a lot, but not washing is better. You ha you have to wash, you don't have to wash it every single day, yeah. but you have to wash it to a certain degree um, to, in a certain span so that you can maintain the strength of the fibers. Right. And you're just also when you're wearing it every single day, day in, day out, Yeah. you're putting stress on the exact same points just constantly and all the time. So anyways, I know that this crowd in here, you know, if, if you're a veteran, then you understand these points. If you're new, maybe these are some new points that you, you want to take. If you have questions about it, let us know in the chats. But, you know, I think the one of the important things that i i'm trying to do is to dispel a lot of myths and rumors i had a you know just to build upon that um you know I, I speaking to another you know uh, retailer and they were talking about how you know there are brands like in our realm that are you know we're niche you know we do niche types of you know high quality niche types of products and then you have like some of the classic brands that have been around and they've, you know, they make raw denim too, but they're really not, you know, in the sense they're not like the go-to brands for a lot of these types of things. And, you know, you might have a sales rep or even the owner of, you know, a company, you know, they might go to a, like a, a prominent denim shop in our realm. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, a, I'm not, I'm trying not to be specific because I don't want to call anybody out or name, name names or, you know, whatever, but you know, it's like the owner of a company or like the CEO of a company comes into like one of these, you know, known denim shops in our realm trying to, you know, they, they recognize like, hey, they're, they're, they're the go-to raw denim store. Like we should be selling our products here. And they come in, they start talking about raw denim with people who've been really active in the community, know what's going on. And they're spewing like the nonsense from like 10 or 15 years ago because they, they're not actually raw denim people. They're, they're, you know, they're business people. Right, they're 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 like, well, I'm hired. My job here is to sell product. You know, I don't really care. Like, I don't wear raw jeans personally. I, I'm not involved. I don't know. But what I've been told is that like the denim guys, they like wearing their jeans, you know, forever, and they never wash their jeans because that makes them better. And uh, yeah, washing is not good. 100% cotton. And so like they're just spewing all like, you know, every time you get like a a mainstream. Should I call it mainstream? Anyways. Uh, you know, some large publication every now and then they want to do an article on denim, raw denim. And then they just, the old myths get reprinted in these things because nobody's doing any kind of research. They, you know, they heard something or they read some other article from some other, you know, big magazines website. So they're just regurgitating a lot of bad information. So I just found it interesting that like, even in, in like those spaces, you'd get these people coming in and, and still regurgitating that nonsense. Um, how to buy her for a shop that we're, we're working with. He was asking me some questions because he's, you know, getting into the raw denim space and he had customers coming in saying that they needed to buy their jeans really tight. And he's like, how do I approach this? Because, you know, that's not what you told me. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's a lot of people still believe that, you know, you got to buy your jeans, you know, a size down, make sure that they're really snug in the waist. You know, if you can hardly do up the button, that's the right size because they're going to stretch out and mold to fit you. I'm like, yeah, the denim's going to mold and fit. But look, when they're too tight, yeah, they're going to stretch out. But they're going to stretch out to basically fit you. And that's it. 
Like, there's no room for you to tuck your jeans in. There's no room for you to, like, have a big meal or grow, you know. Or sit down, even. Sit down or gain a few pounds. So, like, lately, you know, I went from, like, you know, your your waistband, your waistband should do up comfortably. That's kind of been my, my position all the time. But, like, I'm going as far as your waistband should do up comfortably to, like, you should be able to have a little bit of extra room right at the start. And I find that that little bit of extra room right at the start it prevents the jeans from stretching out so much because you're not putting as much stress on that denim and it's so much more comfortable when you're sitting down when you're tucking in like you know maybe the jeans aren't as like fitted as you want it to be but i find that lately with you know maybe more relaxed silhouettes taking a lot more prominence um that you know it 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 because it's we're all wearing it. We're all accepting it. It's starting to be like, you know, that, that frame of reference. Where we're like, oh, that looks good, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, our eyes are are, having, are readjusting in a lot of ways in terms of like what fits are more appealing to us in terms of looks. And I'm glad that things that are a little bit bigger, a little bit more comfortable are, you know, becoming a little bit more uh, uh, in style. Mm. Um, anyways. Yeah, what- I mean, just like anything, you have to experience and form your own opinion and what works best for you like it really depends on you know what kind of life you have and stuff like that too so i think there isn't like a perfect rule book for for this but i think that this one is a good question um lee shang styles says hey b what's the longest you've not washed pair of jeans also does garrett hold the non-wash record at tatin yoko probably Mm. but what is the you know what i don't know I have the problem is like if I was yeah, actively like wear wearing it. a jean, <laughs> it can go a right. long time. Yeah. yeah. So I've had jeans where I don't know, maybe I've gone like six, eight months. May I'm I'm sure I don't know if I've hit a whole year without washing at all. The problem is like when I was into the like the never wash phase of my life, um, I was so eager to finally wash that I. I sometimes would just like, you know, break the seal a little early, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe at eight months, six months, that kind of thing. I would, I would finally, you know, put them through a wash. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I've had jeans where I wore them for a while, you know, and then I stopped wearing them for whatever reason. Maybe I got a different pair. I might outgrow them. Mm -hmm. And then they just sat in the closet unwashed. That's gross. For years. Uh, and they definitely were gross. Um, so I, is, I think that is the cr- grossest because you're not even airing them. Yeah, no, they're just in a pile of filth. Yeah. Um, so I've had that, but my personal longest—I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I've ever exceeded a year of mm-hmm. daily wa- daily driver wear and not washing. Um, I think yeah. the longest for me is with constant wear is like four months, and that was very hard. It's very, very hard. Oh, yeah. I really wanted to wash it. Right. So, um, but yeah, Garrett, I think he still hasn't washed like one of the 32 ounce pairs. Yeah, pairs. that's I think possible. He's just holding off yeah. just to, you know, compare the washed and non wash experience. Right. Um, so yeah, washing, non washing. Wash your jeans. Rather, it's okay to wash your jeans. If you don't look, at the end of the day, you do it's you. Your, Whatever you want to do, they're your jeans. Um, the downside of not washing is, of course, the deterioration of that fabric. And but the smell. And the smell. Of course, the smell. Um, the deterioration of that fabric. But if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for that, then that, that's how you achieve it. But you also have to understand what that comes with. So, yeah. you know, if your things are starting to fall apart after a year, you know, you're going to need to... You're going to need to maintain those jeans somehow. And if that's through repair, you're going to have to learn to do those repairs because nobody wants to handle your stinky jeans. Yeah. That's the other thing. So, like, sure, go ahead and wear your jeans for as long as you want without washing them. That's okay, too. But when the when the problems start to happen, if the crotch starts to blow out, you know, threads start to break here and there, you're the master of your domain here. So you're going to have to fix that because you bringing, like... I'm sure that there's somebody out there who will fix them for you, but don't put them through that. Just don't. 
Oh, it's, it's so rude. It's very it's rude. It's so rude. Um, like, you're okay with it, but other people aren't. You're not You're not willing to touch, you know, other yeah. people's pants that's not been washed for... A whole and, year? Yeah. Imagine, like, the comparison is also, or like... Or even six months yeah. or three months. Yeah. I would not touch anybody's... I don't want to touch somebody's t-shirt that's been worn four or five times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. think, of, think about that. It's the same thing, right? So... Yeah. Imagine that times a year. Don't do it. It's very rude. You know, oh, you guys do repairs? Let me send you my, my filthy jeans. No, it yeah. has to be freshly washed. Yeah. You don't even wear it once after you, yeah. you wash it. Yeah, so keep all that in mind. All that in mind. Um, I've been seeing a lot of um, keen-eyed individuals hmm? that found... Some, uh, oh, stuff going on right. at the Nilgo. We said did a little uppity date on the website. Stealthily. Um, stealthily. How? Uh... I didn't even make it. You just oh, okay. have to tag. Let's see. Um, you can search by tag. Okay, so we've got the website up here on the website. So what are we going to do? We're going to go. It's not even under latest arrivals. So no. You can see the latest arrivals, the true guy saw the black salvage. But uh, secret, like. Yeah, let's go jeans by fit. Yeah. Weird guy. And then, so you can see all of our, you know, classic styles. Let's go to like new. And you'll see that the fall stuff is appearing on the website now. So uh, let's check out that green cast, Slub Selvage. So you can see you've got the pocket flasher. You've got the on model photos. We've got the detail shots here as well. So look at that beautiful leather patch. Oh, that looks fantastic. Um, Read the product description. Measurements aren't up yet. The reason why measurements aren't here is because we wait for the production to arrive. Once the production arrives, we can measure it. Right now, all of these jeans were photographed from the sample. So uh, just be aware of that. So the, new, the newest styles are available for you to view on tatsyandyoko.com with the pricing, with the product descriptions, with the photos. So you can go and peruse the collection. Uh, if there's something you're particularly interested in, click that email when available button. You can enter your email address and just pick your size. So if you're looking for a 33, email when available, that'll pop up. Uh, and then we'll send you an email when that product is available to sell. Of course, if you sign up for our newsletter and you're following us here, you're going to have updates on when and uh, what you know, we always release things Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, but uh, you know, you'll have an idea of what we're going to release wh for what day when you when you subscribe. But if you're you're not so keen, you're not fully paying attention to everything, which is fine. You got you got a life. You got other things to do. Click that button. You can uh, you can be notified when that product is available yeah. uh, to sell. And on the Naked or Famous website, you can see the whole whole shebang. Yeah. So we got collections, fall, winter 23. But this has not been made into a thing yet. Yeah, so it's so, just between yeah. you guys and us. So, uh, yeah, we haven't announced it yet. I haven't I haven't put the video out yet. So, yeah, you can uh, you can click on any of these, and then it'll bring you to Tate and Yoko, and you can uh, see the photos and the product descriptions and stuff. Not a, not all the photos for everything is up and ready yet. So just just be aware. It's, it's a little bit of a work in progress. Um, jackets. Oh, you gotta do oh. it twice. Oh, you gotta do it twice. Okay, there you go. Uh, so yeah, things things are starting to come through. We got those bl these blanket line jackets, which are really cool. So using the solid black selvage, now we've got like a winter edition with that beautiful cozy blanket lining on the inside. So uh, yeah, a lot of great stuff happening there. So yeah. I'm sure that'll keep you guys busy um, for a little while. Check out all the new stuff. A bunch of people have noticed this. We've got a lot of keen-eyed individuals out there. Yeah. We've got a very what intelligent. The these are all very intelligent raw denim fans. The most intelligent raw denim fans out there. These are these are very. These are no, no jabronis in this audience. All right. No jabronis. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Matthew Bradwell writes, I made it a year of warehouse work before washing my Elephant Nines, and they're far and away the best looking pair of jeans, mm -hmm. only ever needed a minor crotch repair. Well, that's there you go. Great. That's that's the durability of the uh, the Elephant mm -hmm. denim. 
Uh, but of course, everyone's uh, mileage may vary. So you know, y yours uh, were able to handle that. Some people's uh, yeah. they might have a little bit. Some people are just in general more prone to crotch blowouts than others. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same way some people are more prone to like fading in general. They yeah. Pro Produce the way something. They, yeah, it's the way they walk, it's the way they carry themselves. There's, there's just something about some there people. There might be yeah. something about their bodily fluids, maybe. Yeah, maybe they sweat a little bit more yeah. or whatever. Um, yeah, I've had people, sometimes, you know, like if you've had enough pairs of raw jeans, you start to notice that your jeans fade. It's like a kind of like a fingerprint. Like... The, there are certain creases that just always form exactly the same way from pair to pair to pair. Um, yeah, if there, if there was ever like a, 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 a detective case and they're trying to like identify some genes, I'd like to be on the case. Be like, All right, well, you can tell from this fade pattern here what that it was definitely worn by the defendant here. What would be the situation there that, that that person can wear these jeans without leaving any DNA? Oh, yeah, I guess. There <laughs> would probably be DNA. Yeah, like, DNA ruins everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was uh, a, 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 a It doesn't ruin everything. It yeah. actually makes everything good, yeah. but it's... It was a robbery, it a a robbery case, and the guy uh, decided to steal something but forgot his pants. For some reason, he removed his pants and wanted to make... They were like, here's the evidence... We don't have DNA. Imagine DNA doesn't exist. Okay. And so they DNA have to. We have exist. to figure it out but from how the forensics you, of the fading pattern. Okay, so you have to look at all the raw denim guys' Instagrams, and it's like, wait, this guy probably is yeah. a good candidate. Yeah. That's a. That's a. That's the. If there was an a specific. manga written about me, that would be my me. I'd be a detective raw denim. Yeah. Yeah. If a, this guy wears jeans. I'm I'll. Gonna find I'll find you. him. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm a raw denim detective. <laughs> so specific. That would be a ridiculously funny manga to write. Where it's just like, somebody it's so should, stupid. Somebody should yeah. write it yeah. for this community yeah. only. Nobody would get it. It's like, I'm just a disgruntled old, like, denim nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but then you probably learn a lot about, yeah. you know, aspects of genes. Yeah, yeah. That would be funny. Basically, I clearly ate the denim, uh, the denim denim nomi. I don't know what that means. Ate the denim denim nomi. Sure. All right. I'll 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 take it. Um, uh, I, I'm the same here, a denim nerd myself. We're all, we're all denim nerds here, my friend. You're, among, you're amongst friends. You're amongst uh, kindred spirits. Um, uh, worthy of an episode of a Detective Conan, for sure. <laughs> I think so. Um, okay. Uh, Avlas writes, I just bought the raw cotton canvas pants and a rivet immediately came off the front pocket. Is there anything I should be worried about? You should contact yeah. them for Tatenyoko uh, or wh whoever you bought it from. Yeah. Just uh, set, send us an email or wh from wherever you purchased it and we'll take care of that for you. I mean, Construction-wise, like the like the physical, uh, uh, the physical jeans are gonna be fine. But uh, if you want to get that rivet fixed or replaced or whatever, you can uh, send us a message. We can take care of that for you. No problem. Um, okay. Uh, uh, B D writes. I've noticed on new pairs, the sun shows the same outside thigh fades. On my new pairs, the sun shows the same outside thigh fades. Um, maybe reword. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but uh, maybe reword it for me. Um, uh, Ronald uh, Brashers writes: Will the fall collection be in True Guy? There will be a lot of fall styles available in the True Guy, not but all. not all of the fall styles. If you do go to the NakedAndFamousDenim.com website. Um, we have all of that listed there. So you'll see uh, what jeans are available and what fits. We'll just go over here real quick. And uh, you can see uh, like the Army HBT, the Herringbone Twill uh, is only available super weird and easy, whereas like the All Black Comfort Stretch, super weird, easy, true stack guy. So you can see which styles like Elephant 12 available in the true guy. King of Slub 2 available in the true guy and so on. So not everything just because 
Um, when we planned the collection, uh, just reasons we just uh, it wasn't in my it wasn't fully in mind at that point. So uh, yeah, I just gotta fix a little color issue that I think is happening here. Bam! All right, better color. I got some samples in. Hmm. I got some. We got some samples in. Stuff from Canada. Live unboxing. We're gonna do it. Okay. Yeah. You're, now? Yeah, let's do it. We're gonna hit a live unboxing here. Let's hope that there wouldn't be anything weird in the box. I, I, we can only imagine. Hopefully nothing. I don't think they'd send us anything weird. Um, uh, all right. Um, Nick Sparks writes, nerdy question, why the different watch pockets between fits? Um, just for v variety. Um, I like it because it helps me also from far determine what is what fit. Um, but there's no, like, that's really the rhyme or reason. It's just for, for variety. Watch pockets, I like to call it a coin pocket, um, mostly because I don't think we uh, carry our watches in there uh, anymore. No, you don't have a also, all, those yeah, also, I don't think that that was ever actually intended like for jeans as a watch pocket because I don't find that pocket watches, they, I don't think they were ever like really that small that they would fit in the coin pocket very comfortably. I think it just like originally came from like, oh, we call this tiny pocket on the suit or like vest like, or whatever. Like, other. I, I could see that. Yeah, a watch pocket. Right. So we're just going to call this a watch pocket yeah. too. Or like some people call this. Watch pocket, right. I yeah. I on an old suit I understand. Yeah, but on jeans I just Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me that the intention was for watches rather than like just to carry small items. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, who uses their coin pocket? I use my coin pocket always. All the time. Yeah. I if I, I put something in the big pocket, it just goes at the end. Yeah. If I have something small. I right. have to put it in the coin pocket. Yeah. Right. So let's it's a very let, let me know. Important pocket. Nate Dog says I carry my iPods. Your iPods or it's, your AirPods? Yeah. If you're carrying AirPods. an iPod in there, I appreciate that. Oh, I, micro. What do you call that? Nano. Nano. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a big. I'm. I'm still a big iPod guy. I love iPods. I think the iPod. I mean, anyways. Well, we're, we're the generation yeah. of it. So. Boy, did I love the iPod. The iPod changed our yeah. lives. I have a drawer full of iPods. And, like, modding them is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got an iPod... Oh, those are some exciting times. Use it still. They're great. They're fantastic. Um, the only reason... I don't even know... Look, as much as I... I like, I like streaming because of the convenience. Um, and your instant access yeah. to things that you never... Right. Listen to? Yeah. I listen to a, mostly about the same stuff, more or less. I just like the fact that I can get it on the fly. I do. I do like, you know, maybe if there's an album I didn't own, um, I'm but, not. I'm not opposed to like buying it because to be re to be fair, like paying every single month for streaming. Like, do you know how many CDs I can buy with that? Like, if you go to the thrift store, all the CDs are a dollar. By the way. Yeah. Like you but can then, buy all and all of your albums, especially if you're my age, all the albums that you like are there. Yeah. They're just they're always all there. Mm -hmm. So you can buy every album you ever liked if you if you don't already own it for a buck each and rip them all in and you can rip them in iTunes and dump that still to your iPod and have yeah. all it's of just your a music. Lot of work. Yeah, it, it is a lot it's a lot more work. There's no question yeah. about that. The convenience of streaming is worth yeah, the price. It's worth the price for um, sure. But uh iPods. I love I love them. And you can listen to all your like yeah. podcasts and stuff like that. So it's okay. That's What's true. in right. the box? What's in the box? Let's let's What's let's hit in that. The box? No, it's not that. Uh, beard comb in the coin pocket. All right, that's beard a good use. Comb. Small yeah. Swiss Army knife. David Rea says. Mm. Um, uh, I Rin L. I put my rings in there when I wash my hands. Mm. Right on. Um, uh. Nate Dog writes, modding, that's a fun time. Yeah, absolutely. Modding iPods is, 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 a, is really fun, and it's easy. It's very easy. Uh, the, the hardest part about modding an iPod is opening the iPod, because they, like, they were built like tanks, and opening them up is just the worst thing. Terrible. Um, okay. 
Uh, are you guys going to make another crazy colored salvage ID like the Kasuri? My focus on like a lot of the production moving forward is to create more compelling salvage ID colors. Uh, that's I've been working on that a lot this week, actually. Who wants to guess what's in yeah. this box? Yeah, who wants to guess? Guess what's in the box. Kenny Ingram, hello from Winnipeg. Sorry, I'm late to the party. Ooh. You're never you're never late. Whether you're on time at the start, you join us in the middle, or you're watching in the replay, you're right on time. You want to go from uh, super exciting? Yes. Give us the most super exciting piece in that box. It's hard to tell, but this is on the top, and it's pretty exciting. Okay, so let's see it. it. Hot damn. What do we got there? King of Slob 2. Hot damn. Hot damn. Let's check so out. It is 22 the, ounce. Is 23? it 22 or 23 ounce? 23 yeah. ounce. Extremely slobby. Look at that. It is the guide. same um, construction as the King of Slob 1. Yes. However, I've not seen these in person yet. Yeah. This is my first time. We have the beige weft on the yeah. second version. Oh, this is so, it hurts my nails. <laughs> the cuff. You don't even have to give us a scratch test and you can already hear how yeah. rough this is. Ooh. Um Okay. Like that nice, very nice warm toned weft. It really it's adds very subtle, yeah. but it, it does add the warmness to the fabric. Fantastic. So these are coming out this fall. There's a fall winter 23 item. Yeah. And as we just saw on the website, it is going to be available also in our true guy fit. So a lot of great options here. In the King of Sub 2, this is the heaviest denim that we can sew in our factory. Mm -hmm. 23 ounces. It really, it really pushes things. Yeah. And the fact that we even chain stitch these is also very impressive. Oh, we did? Yeah. That's great. You, it's like sometimes you really have to consider whether or not it's worth it to chain stitch this heavyweight stuff because it can put a machine out of commission very easily. And if one of our chain stitching machines goes down, then one of our chain stitching machines goes down and it's just a pain in the ass. Um, so at least this, this particular one, this might just be the sample. I don't know if that's going to happen for all the production, but if it doesn't, the reason is because we don't want our machines to go down. This is the flasher. Look at that flasher. That's a cool flasher. This reminds me of JoJo, actually. Yeah. Very, <laughs> Very regal. JoJo-like yeah. uh, design. Ooh, rigid. Look yeah. at that salvage ID again. Look at how crazy the uh, the weave pattern is. It's so irregular. And it's so extreme because you can see how thick this uh, fabric is. So that's yeah. the king of slub too. Stand up test on these thirty on these twenty three ounces. Oh, this is gonna stand up no problem. Yeah. Hold on a second, let's do it's it. It's very rigid. Yeah. It's going to hurt your like behind your knees. Probably. Sure. Okay, let's do the stand up test. This takes some. Um, you gotta be a professional to know how to do this. I remember doing this at trade shows all the time and just like blowing people's minds. Those are the days. My floor is a little uneven here, so hopefully we can get it going. But I think we're gonna have not an issue. There we go. Ta-da! Ta-da! No strings. That's a heavyweight denim. That That's a heavyweight a very rigid, rigid denim. denim. Okay. Uh, what often denim. happens is people attack these jeans also at the trade show whenever they see them standing well, like this. This look inside to see if there's a stand. Yeah. But there's no stand. So there you go. 23 ounces. King oh. of Slub. King of Slub 2. That truly is the king, the Slub of Kings. It, you know, the reason why we could push the Slub texture so heavy on this one is because we had to develop the yarn. This was... This was a just a crazy work in progress to get the first King of Slub done. It took two years. Um, and Nobody makes slub yarns like this because yeah. there is no use for this yeah. in real world. Yeah. The, the mill, because we kept pushing it, and the mill brought in the yarn supplier basically to try to shut us up and be like, we can't Look, do it anymore. It's not us saying that we can't do it. The yarn supplier is saying they can't make yarn this crazy. 
And the mistake that the mill made was bringing the yarn supplier in because we just were like, well, of course you guys can do it. And like we, we, like you had the sales guy and then you had like the sales manager and the sales manager was like, look, we can't, it's not possible. And the sales guy's like, of course we can do it. Like, yeah, let's, let's do it. We're gonna, we're gonna do it. And so we just like kept like, you know, pushing him to like do it. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. Anyways, we got it done. Um, and that's why you just, you're not gonna find a slubbier denim than this. People are working with existing yarn. We had to create the yarn. So that's the king of slub right there. Um, uh, Topher Cobra, when you're taking pictures of the web, uh, for the website, you should include a photo with the jeans standing on their own. I think See, so. In the, pe yeah. in the photos though, that it's not so exciting because anything is possible in the photos. In real life, seeing yeah. it actually yeah, seeing it standing. Yeah. This is this is a good Instagram reel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I gotta yeah. figure that out. Okay. Oh, this is good jacket. That's it. Wait. What else do we got oh, in there? We're missing the things. They're that we supposed bought. to send Jorn though, but they said they couldn't find it, and I'm oh, like, oh, they couldn't find it. Well, they, I don't know. Anyways. All right. We have one more jean yeah. that's uh, that's uh, that you haven't seen before. I think uh, I haven't seen it. Okay, what do we got? So this is the new kimono print ah, salvage. Right. Yeah. So, so this is for fall 23 as well. Yep. Um, we did the kimono print salvage a long time ago. Yeah, we've done it before. Yeah. This is the new this edition. This is the new edition. So it's a very classic looking, I think 12 ounce. Very 12 or 12 soft, and a half actually. ounce denim. Yeah. yeah. With... this kimono print lining. And now, yeah. uh, what's really neat about this is that number one, Risa designed this repeating pattern print, but it's a mixture of like four different, three or four different three, yeah. uh, kimono patterns so we all got in that, one. We got the Asanoha print yeah. over here. We got the, I don't know what you call this. Yeah. It's like loop-de-loop -loop yeah, circle sure. yeah. ones. And then we have, I also don't know what yeah, you call Yeah, the geometric this, kind yeah, of uh, triangle. Like wavy kind yeah. of thing. So, so, and then it just kind of blends in with each other. So it's kind of cool yeah. patchwork looking thing. So yours will will vary a little bit from cuff to cuff, but it's got three beautiful patterns all on the inside here. This is printed in, so you've got a very classic look on the outside, and then you've got that combined with the great cuff flipper design here. So uh, for those who want something that is you know, a great daily driver, very soft, very comfortable, and then with just a little bit of flair, You've got the, the new kimono print selvage. That's a, a new one for fall winter 23. Great, these are two unboxing. We haven't seen these, I haven't seen these in physical form, physical form up until right now. You guys got to experience my, what else we got? Your jacket. Oh, my jacket, let's check out my jacket. <laughs> this is a personal thing. This took up the most oh, space. Thanks oh. guys, I appreciate it. Oh, I bought this, uh, oh, it's big. It's very puffy. So I bought this military jacket just because I thought it was really, really neat. Like an army surplus. And uh, yeah, it's brand new. Canadian army surplus. This, is, this feels really warm. Yeah, too. let's check it out. Is I, it like a polyfilled, cotton filled? I have no idea. I saw it on a website. Uh, jacket combat vehicle crewman. Cold weather. This Cold jacket weather. together with suitable undergarments provides protections to minus 25. All right. Made in February 1991? 1991. Somebody signed it? Okay. Oh. Wool, wool on the inside. Wow. Shell is 50% nylon, 50% cotton. All right. Well, let's try it on. Wool. Wool, cool. Wuru is kuru. Maybe I should take off this shirt first. Maybe. Live fit check, live fit test. Of the product that we don't make. We don't make it, but it's still cool. It's got like a wire in the hood. Canadians know how to yeah. make it. That's a cool jacket. It is a cool jacket. It has a very subtle Canadian-ness built in. And there's a wire in the hood, which is kind of neat because you can yeah, that's what I really liked about the uh, Canada Goose. It's like, this is insane. You can adjust it however way you want. 
It is hot in here, by the way. I can keep my bullets in here for... uh, Or pens. Or pens. Or candy. Uh, Yeah. Or candy cigarettes. You got some nice pocket in here. Yep. You have inside pockets. Inside pockets. This is a fantastic jacket. All right. I'm glad I found it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Yeah. Just... uh, I don't know how much I'm gonna get to wear it, but I just I lo- I liked the way it looked. It's cold here. Yeah, I know, but uh, I don't leave the house very often. 1991. It's a good find. Or a uh, house gets cold, so yeah, you can s- wear it inside the especially house. Especially in this condition. Anyways, uh, there it goes. Ooh. Hot. Keep your darts in there. My darts, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Cathedral Rain Canadian. Military gear is really nice. Uh, there are some great surplus sites for it. Yeah, I don't remember what site I bought that on. It was like some random, I think a random site in like Alberta. Mm. Uh, they're selling like outdoor goods and things like that. And they just, because I, I, I was, I was uh, just on a, I don't know, deep dive, I guess, on military garments. And I found a picture of that jacket. I'm like, wow, that jacket's so cool. I got to see if I can find it. And then uh, I found just some random website that had it, and I placed the order. And then they're like, oh, no, we don't have it in stock anymore. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, oh, no, but we have another one in stock. Like, I don't know, it's like a different size, slightly different uh, model. But anyways, it, I just said, just ship whatever you got. Mm. That's what that's what came. So Yeah, I mean, I would trust Canadian military to have a very Good warm cold month. weather. Yeah. yeah. Um, Pedro, beef jerky holders uh, on that jacket. All right. <laughs> that's great. Uh, snap into a Slim Jim. Ooh, yeah. Uh, uh, are those King of Slub 2s unsamphorized? This is, check the flasher. I think it's unsamphorized. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it is, right? Well, Maybe the flasher is right there. It should say it. Oh. Yeah. Unsamphorized. Unsamphorized. Yeah. There you go. Um, we will have a shrink uh, guide on yeah. for the website. So just be aware of that. It, it's... It's essentially exactly the same as uh, same of fabric Slab as the King of Slab One. Okay. But um, um okay, there you go. Um uh, the curious sailor me like the King of Slab Two because I live here in the PNW. That's what I'm waiting for. Mm. Pacific Northwest. Yeah. I'm I'm assuming that's Pacific Northwest or it's something else that I don't know what it is, uh, but yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get that cold weather. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great option for you. Um, okay, um, uh, Tina Shea writes, love the denim, but can you tell us a bit more about your kimonos slash trousers? Love the Japanese inspired look. Mm. Trousers like the late the have? ladies uh, like kind of wide wide trousers. Oh, I think that's what. Is that what you mean? I think that's what they mean. Let, can you confirm uh, what you what you mean? But I think that's what you mean. Um, let me just pull them up on the website, though. Um, hmm. Just some alarm outside. Some some uh, criminal activities happening. Um, let me just pull it up. I just need to find it on the website. Uh. It's amazing how much an alarm going off in the background just kind of messes with your head a little bit. Um, I'm presuming, sorry, I know this is exciting content here, me searching for stuff. Uh, Why pants? That you mean these items. I don't have them. Oh, well, it's kind of similar to what you have now, but uh, like the wide pant, so like, are you, are you talking about these items? Uh, yeah. We actually, these are kind of, uni- they're not kind of unisex. They're, they're very unisex. I mean, in, you know, on the Naked and Famous Denim website, we have them under the women's collection. But, you know, for Essence, we used to do a lot of these for men's. And we would do, like, these long jackets that would go with them as well. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, it's elastic in the back, and it's also very oversized. So yeah. it's very unisex. Yeah. But I, I have a feeling that, um, yeah, I mean, the, the sizes that, that's larger would fit, like, a smaller man. Maybe mm-hmm. not, like, fully men sizing. 
for the, the ones that we carry on all of the site. Yeah. But. And then uh, we've got the kimono shirts as well, which we've got right here. Yeah. And these are kind of like, um, you know, Japanese, uh, what, what is it called? They're not like, hmm? yeah. Noragi, yeah. Uh, not like happy maybe. Maybe not so much uh, because it just mm. didn't tie up the same way. Too. I yeah. don't know. I'm, I'm not a Japanese expert, unfortunately. What? <laughs> I don't believe it. Um, but uh, we do make this, you know, just kind of like an open front uh, with a little tie to to yeah. close it. It's kind of just like a casual summer over shirt. Sometimes yeah. it's a little bit more work weary. Yeah. Uh, or very summery uh, inspired. You'll like yeah. you'll see them here, like people wearing them around Japan. And uh, yeah, we've been doing these for quite a while. Yeah. Um, and they're the just like a casual yeah. over shirt. The beauty, maybe you want to put this on. Sure. Because the beauty of this is that it's not actually like kimono y. Like, yeah. it's not, it doesn't have like a wide sleeve or anything. It does have like regular short sleeve. So it is just basically an over shirt that looks slightly Japanese y. So, yeah. It's like, very versatile. Like it, you don't look like you're like, you know, yeah, trying to be Japanese. You just look like it's a cool style. It's like a sophisticated yeah. kind of easy shirt, easy shirt to yeah. throw on top of, and uh, yeah, even if you just want to pair it with like a white t-shirt or something, uh, easy to go, very casual, and uh, yeah, we've been doing these for a while. I think people like them. I really like them. I've I've done a lot of these in the past in like flannels, and I was really into the flannel ones for a long time. I wore those for a while. But like, if you want, if, like, if you want to get into this, like, the easiest one to get into is the uh, this rinsed denim one that we do yeah. here. Uh, and but, sometimes, like, the the pattern on the inside will be a little bit different. Some, you know, just a, a contrasted fabric. But um, yeah, a lot of different options here. But this spring option, spring twenty four, so it's, yeah, it's gonna not going to come out well, for a while. But this fabric is actually super cool. Yeah, these are all like it's woven in, and it's a very slubby yarns that just goes vert uh, horizontally in the fabric. So it has a lot of texture. So that's yeah. a good one. Okay, sashiko style uh, fabric on that guy. Um, oh yeah, Invis Ian's with the reminder, with the big reminder. If you guys follow Tate and Yoko on Instagram, mm -hmm. which you definitely should do, usually on Fridays the, the guys will get together to have, a, you know, just a little hangout fun, a little uh, Instagram live stream. And we've got the Terry word of the day. Mm -hmm. And if you use the word of the day you know, on your orders, um, he's going to give you a little extra goodie. Uh, so the word of the day is... Aubergine, 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 I don't know how to say that, Aubergine, spell it right or spell it wrong, it doesn't matter, leave that in the comments section of your order, Aubergine, the color, Aubergine, Aubergine, tell me which one, which way it goes, I don't know, the second way, Aubergine, yeah, okay, use that word, that's the special word of the day, I can't say it myself, but Try. it's not, Aubergine. Yeah, it's a hard word. It is a very hard word. Um, but Aubrey, it's Aubrey is easy. Yeah. Aub Aubergine. Aubergine. Yes. Aubergine. Um, tough one, but a good one. That's a fifty cent word if I ever heard one. Somebody, if somebody used the word Aubergine What's in a sentence. What's the highest price? I think fifty for cents. Word? That's the really. Yeah. Then this is it. That's no. it. No. The fifty cent word is like one of those like super long like medical sounding. This is words. no no. This is a sophisticated word for sophisticated people that are just dropping, you know, expensive words on you. All right. For for the sake of it, this is a hard flex in 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 the world of speech. Ah. Yeah. If you drop this bomb on somebody, it shows how intellectual you are. How much smarter you are than the other person. Uh, like, that's an eggplant, and what color is that? Somebody's gonna say purple, and you're saying, nah, aubergine. And you're like, oh, I see. Respect. You gotta, you gotta do a deep bow on that one. Wow. Deep bow, deepest bow. Um, so, uh, very expensive word, and it will get you a little extra gift 
with your purchase at Tatiyanyoko uh, this week. So use the word Aubergine for uh, for a special surprise from Terry, mm. our warehouse expert manager extraordinaire. He takes care of your orders. He makes sure that they all get out on time as quickly as possible to you. So uh, shout out to Big Terry for all of his dedication and hard work. Um, Pedro, hope the Elephant 12s is a precursor to the Toxic Elephant. Brandon, Toxic Elephant, please. Well, don't worry. The Toxic Elephant isn't on the agenda yet, Mm. but we are starting to marry worlds of naked and famous denim fabrics together. And uh, we are, I don't know if I announced it before, but anyways, I'm going to, I'm going to, whether I did or I didn't, you're going to hear about it now. And that is that the next elephant, Elephant elephant 13. 13. Oh, it's a 13 13. one. It's good luck. Mm. Red core elephant denim is in development. It's, it's not a guarantee, but it is in development. So that's going to be a wild elephant denim. I think it's going to be incredible. You know, I was talking, talking to Alex last night, and he's like, are you guys ever going to do the red core again? He's like, because they got a beautiful faded pair of red cores in their shop at Blue Owl. He's like, everybody always asks for it. I'm like, yo, we're working on red core elephant. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, that's going to, it's going to kill. People are going to love it. The fading is going to be incredible. Like, take, take the fading potential of the elephant denim, like those thick, juicy, like high contrast lines, and then make it all red. And the fact, like the fact that like the indigo on an elephant denim just doesn't quite penetrate as deep as like even though it's rope dyed, it just doesn't penetrate as deep. So there's so much more red in that yarn because it's so thick. It's gonna yeah, be the red. The thickness of the yarns yeah. that really makes. That's why like heavyweight jeans um, fade really, yeah. really impressively. Because the contrast the of the white core of that yarn. Yeah. Over the, the, the ratio of, of the white core of the yarn to the indigo is a lot higher uh, than like a typical you yeah. know, yarn and it, used for denim. It's also not packed uh, so so uh, tightly. So <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah. Matthew, Matthew, it is going to be crazy, yeah. I think, to see the fates. Matthew Bradwell, LOL, in development. It's like a city in Quebec. It's like the entire province of Quebec. <laughs> it's, <in development. laughs> it's always in development. They're always fixing something. <laughs> Um, White Lightning, a.k.a. Aqua, Red Core plus Elephant equals Cray. And it's pretty Cray. That S Cray. That's what I'm saying. That, I haven't heard the word Cray in a while. Cray. That was that was a big word. Mm-hmm. It was. I wouldn't call it a 50 cent word. <laughs> That's more like it a wasn't, negative 2 cent Nor word. was it used by the illustrious rapper 50 Cent. But that was a very... I would say it was a cheaply thrown around word um, yeah, for a long time. Yeah, it's just a catchy word. Yeah. I like it. It was a lot of fun. That, that was a fun word to use. Mm. What are some other fun words that we used? Let us know in the chat. Um, in the 90s? Even that was recent, Cray. Recent? <laughs> yeah. It feels like a long time ago. It's like 10 years ago. That was uh, uh, that Jay-Z and Kanye song. Mm. Brothers in Paris, I think they called it. Um, that was a big song, especially going to Paris and have that like that time we were probably still like going out at night after trade shows and that song just blasting in whatever venue in Paris. That was a big one. Um, also when, uh, that other Jay-Z song, um, uh, Empire State of Mind, whenever we go to New York early days, that song, it was always a... That was a short-lived song, I feel like. Oh, yeah. Maybe. But I just remember uh, I just remember a lot of moments in New York with that song playing. Um, uh, yeah. Just and being in New York and just being young and, you know, running around trying to sell jeans. Good times. Um, uh, Sebastian Piljay writes, Wonder Looper question. Sure. Since Wonder Looper is made in Japan, will you guys end up doing any Dorozome. Maybe. Maybe. Dorozome is uh, an... So for those people who don't know what that is, that's mud dye. And 
uh, mud dye works best when you're garment dyeing something. It um, only gets garment dyed, I think. Yeah. Maybe fabric, but I don't think it would be... Uh, fabric dye, maybe, but like yarn dye? No, definitely no. not. Yeah. Nobody yeah. would use that yarn to make a fabric right. in the machine. Right, it, because it's going to gunk the machines up real bad, and they do not want that. Uh, if somebody does do it, they're cray. Um, <laughs> but, uh, like the segue there, um, I'm not, it's not impossible, but it's it's very unlikely but uh yeah it's definitely a possibility like natural dyes um whether it's through uh like negative famous or wonder looper you know we're we're big fans of doing that kind of stuff so uh if if uh if it's a if it's a possibility then it's a probability and uh i wouldn't rule it out so mm. there you go um uh, matthew bradwell writes O oh, dip city hipsters in 2012 O oh, dip i never heard that term before I don't know about I don't know what that is, uh, but apparently city hipsters use that term. Uh, if you're from um, Philadelphia, I learned about John. Everything's a John. What does that mean? It's it's a it's a catch-all word for everything. Like that's my John. Those Johns over there. Like it. Referring to a, a to, person. It, referring to anything. Like if it's a good song, that's my John. Uh. Like, I guess that's the, I don't know, if it's a good restaurant, like, that's the John. I can only use it in one way. John's. <laughs> that's, uh, this that's, John is that's great. great. Uh, Queen in there says that. So, yeah. John me that John, Matthew Bradwell says. That's a sentence. That, uh, is, a, that is a part of the American vernacular. It's only used in Philadelphia? It's a Philadelphia term. Never yeah. heard that before. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like that term. Uh, Jane is a play on a uh, Jane or John is a play on the word joint. Long John Silver. Yep. Uh, do you want to know? For those people who don't know, this is a very local Canadian word that even most Canadians probably don't know about. But a hooded sweatshirt, um, like a pullover hooded sweatshirt in Saskatchewan. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what they are called? I heard it. I, I heard this, yeah. certainly. Oh, but... Bunny hugs. Bunny hugs. <laughs> yeah, bunny hugs. And this is used only in Saskatchewan. That's yeah. just a great Somebody word. told me this, and I could not believe it. I looked yeah. it up. It's a real thing. <laughs> I think I was um, there when yeah, they yeah. pointed that out. And yeah, it was su it's such a great term um, for a garment. A bunny hug. I'm like, yes. It makes you yeah. feel like... feels cozy and warm. Call our hoodies, yeah. uh, bunny, bunny hugs. Bunny hugs. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Matthew Bradwell writes, I got called out by a stranger in Portland for being a Philly transplant for using John. Use your language. You know what? Screw yeah, that. I mean, that's how yeah. you get your language yeah, how spread. Do you, yeah, that's how, that's how yeah. all the words get spread. Right? So, use it. Call, call sweatshirts bunny hugs. You, it's free for you to use now. I'm not even from Saskatchewan, but I'm giving it to everybody. That's that's the... We need to develop a bunny hug. Yeah, a, a bunny hug sweatshirt. All right. Uh, Jello. Jello uh, writes, Speaking of garment dyed, so stoked for the Sumi ink. If the fall winter collection is yarn dyed instead of garment dyed, Weft contrast is undeterred. Uh, sorry, let's read that again. Um, so stoked for the Sumi ink. Uh, if the fall winter collection is yarn dyed instead of garment dyed, weft contrast is undeterred. Ev yeah. Everything is yarn dyed except for Sumi, actually, because yeah. Sumi is a coating. It's yarn dyed and then coated. Yeah, uh, yarn dyed yeah. indigo. With the warp and then the wet uh, and the and then on the surface on the the front side yeah. it's semi ink yeah. coated right and what what contrast is undeterred because in a garment dye you take the entire garment you dip it in a dye and then it generally it uniformly fade uh, dyes the entire garment so you would not have weft contrast um, with a garment dyed item because the entire garment would be the same color uh, so there you go. Um, uh, Rulis writes, wish the green cast was available for the true guy. Me yes. too, but wait for the MIJ 
Right. MIJ-12, which is coming TBD. Um, that will be a gr another green cast option for you, and it will be available in the True Guy fit. So you're just going to have to be a little patient on that one. The, the, the green cast that we have coming out in the mainline collection, very small production run. Yeah, um, very limited. So that's... We just use, essentially, we're just using up the leftover fabric, right? Yeah, maybe. I think that's what it was. Like, mm -hmm. when we made the MIJ, um, I think we made a samphorized, like, bit of the fabric. And then uh, that's what we're using mm -hmm, for that. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, very, very small production run of that one. Um, okay. Uh uh, Carbon Coded writes, when does the Fall Winter Collection video come out? Um, I'll put it out after this live stream. Oh. That's what I'll do. Yeah, we I'll gotta just... cut the live stream a little short mm, today. Yeah, just a little, just a touch. But uh, after the live stream, I will make the Fall Winter video available. I'll just, I'll, I'll publish it. Uh, you can check it out. And then on Monday, I'll send out an email so everybody knows about it. Uh, but you guys know about it because you guys are the you're the OGs. That's what I'm saying. Um, uh, Ian M. writes, is the MIJ Greencast going to have the Type 2 jacket? Super excited for that Type 2. Yes. Uh, Anything from now and on? We'll have it. We'll have it. Yeah. But we just don't know when. Yeah. There's some production delays on this uh, side of the earth. Um, I, we might have touched base on it before. Uh, essentially, production in Japan has very much slowed down in general. Um, just to give you a little background on it. You know, if you're American and you're buying stuff from Japan, like if you're shopping on wonderlooper.com, um, just a little plug there for me. Uh, you'll notice that your American dollar goes really, really far here in Japan. And... When you're doing production internationally, a lot of times, you know, the international currency is American dollars. And because the buying power of the Japanese yen versus American dollars has dropped a lot, there's a lot of companies that might have made products overseas who are seeing the value of that, you know, be very, very difficult for them. So they're moving a lot more of their production into Japan. And, you know, there is still production in Japan. It's just not, it's not like wide, super widespread like it is in, you know, other countries. So the factories here are just being bombarded with production requests. So their their schedules are full. They're filling up fast. And I mean, it also doesn't help that obviously, as everybody knows, you know, Japan is a shrinking population. Yeah. And it's, it's that like, you know, working in factories... Again, it's you know, it's not the the go to job for a lot of mm -hmm. young people, so it's hard to recruit more new people and especially when the demand is a little bit, you know, unstable. Like it, it might be going up now, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna stay there. Right. So it's you know, hard they to can't hire invest. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard to expand. Even yeah. if they wanted to expand, it's hard to expand. It, it takes it, time because yeah. you have to train them right. and everything. So so you have a you have a country that has you know a smaller production capacity uh, that is being filled, and uh, you know there is also a hesitance to expand because even though there is a, a, a big demand now, like Risa says, it doesn't mean it's forever. You know, if 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 people's if the currency changes, then you know production will. A lot of these big companies, their bottom line is their bottom line. Like they don't, they don't actually care where anything is made. It's just about the bottom line. And while they are making in Japan, don't you worry. They will promote how how proud they are of local production. But as soon as they move it out, that that story is going to change. Uh, anyway, it's very annoying for me. But um, so there is this dynamic situation where we want to expand, but we can't expand too much. Expanding is difficult because of the lack of resources in terms of, you know, uh, you know, the, the human aspect of that. So that's just delaying a lot of production, not just for us, but for everybody. Uh, so there will be some delays of like MIJ uh, 12, 14 is probably going to be okay. 
13 is fine. The 10 restock, MIJ 10 restock, is probably going to be delayed a little bit, I think. 10 and 12 are the yeah. ones that were having problems, but, but, but essentially that would de delay 14 as well. 13 is already in the, the finishing stages, yeah. so 13 would for sure come out this year. Um, 10 restock, 12 delayed perhaps till next year, yeah. and then that essentially brings us 14 a little bit later in the season two yeah. probably but but but, by, but by in time for the, the warmer weather yeah right? like dropping the 14 in like january probably isn't like the best time for that but uh that's not going to happen yeah so, so. it'll if it comes out like next april may it's likely <laughs> we'll see we'll see, we'll see. um anyway three says under promise always yeah yeah uh, reese is on it this is this is she's been calling factories and stuff dealing with production stuff a lot uh, lately so thank you reset for taking care of this oh it's my pleasure yeah um okay uh pro uh i don't know how to say that pro pro sis um how likely is it that the king of lords will be re-released um it's, I can see that. I happening. can see it happening. Yeah. It's it's likely. I'll say that. I don't I don't have a timeline for that, but it is likely. Um, it's, a, it's a good venom too. We, yeah. we do need to bring it back. Yeah. Uh, John Snow writes got the Mij10 jacket from England to the U.S. All right. Nice. Uh, fantastic. That is a great jacket. Not too many of those were made in the first batch. And it traveled the world because yeah. it went from Japan, presumably to yeah. Canada and yeah. then to England yeah. and then to the United yeah. States. But now you have it and you're gonna have it for a long time. You're gonna enjoy that jacket. And Great you bring jacket it to, to have. Australia just to cover the cover ground. the globe. Yeah. All right. Um okay, Parker Madison, what are the specs of the MIJ fourteen? What are the specs? I can find the weight. You can show off the the fabric. Let's see. This one. Is it would you there it is. Okay, MIJ-14, this is our workwear style, lightweight denim, tight twill, but you can see it's made with a beige weft and it's very, very, very neppy, as you can see here. So this is the True Guy sample, our, our, this sample came out, a some, it's not perfect, that's why it's a sample, we gotta get uh, some kinks, uh, you know, worked out, the one kink, you might notice right away is the width of the selvage ID on our MIJ line. We always have it narrow. This one, they kind of just did it narrow. like with our normal width that you'd find on like a Canadian production. Um, so you can see that you can see how neppy and slubby this texture is all white selvage ID. And it's a nice lightweight form. I believe it's 10 ounces. Risa is going to double check I don't on know that if I one. Can confirm it uh, she's going to try and confirm it at the yeah. very least, uh, but it is a lighter weight denim. And uh, you can see it's going to be very, very nice for the summer. So if you want a hardcore, lightweight option, uh, this is going to be the denim for you. I don't, you really don't see this in a lot, you know, for an MIJ lightweight option, summer option, you know, I think, I mean, I'm not, yeah, I'm going to take credit for it. Like the, the idea of like, summer weight lightweight raw denim jeans you know for i don't i don't think that anyone was really pushing that idea until we came along and started doing it with like the sub you know the 10 ounces and under uh fabrics you know and now we're kind of making that we're taking that idea that we have that we do every spring summer in our from in the the main line and now applying it to the mij line so like a hardcore lightweight option some people think you know raw denim you want hardcore heavyweight this and that but it doesn't always have to be so uh i'm excited for this one i think a lot of people are, are going to enjoy this fabric a lot around you can see. eight and a half to nine ounce okay so i think i think it's about nine ounces. probably nine ounces and you can see it's slubby it's neppy it's hairy it's got everything you want a lot of character a great feel as well and uh Nice and light for the summer. So this is going to be available in a variety of options. Super weird, easy, and true guy. You're going to get the two denim jackets, the the, uh, the classic denim jacket and the heritage style denim jacket. Um, 
and that's the MIJ-14. This is going to be a spring-summer 24 release, so we're, it's going to be a ways away. I don't even have pricing on this yet, um, but but yeah, that's coming. That's the MIJ-14. Um, those still look super rigid for 10 ounces. I mean, yeah, they, they definitely have... They're not like the stiffest jeans out there, but there's still quite a bit of like rigidness left in this fabric. Um, but the more you wear it, the more you wash it, obviously it's gonna soften up a lot. I'm just, just, hopefully it really picks up on the camera, but it is an incredibly fuzzy and hairy denim. Uh, and nappy. Yeah. Like, so this one has the nap warp. I don't, I wasn't talking. Was, okay. Nap warp and then nap weft. So, um, so it's double nap. It's nap outside, nap inside. Blue nap, white nap, or beige nap. Yeah. It's 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 nappy. Yeah. It is it's all naps. All character. Yeah. So another look on the inside, just because. Yeah. We, we got to show that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So that's... A lot of the times, nap denim has weft nap, and that's the white or you know lighter colored nap. But this one has both warp and mm -hmm. weft, so that's kind of cool. And yeah. it's also two by one. Tight, tight, yeah. uh, that one. Right, Jap27 writes, what kind of salvage ID colors do you have in mind for the future? Um, we have, we're drilling down the uh, Dea de los Muertos denim. So that is gonna be a like Mexican blanket, uh, like gradient toned salvage ID, which is gonna feature like gradient toned from like green and red and yellow and orange. It's gonna be very vibrant. I'm looking forward to that one quite a lot. Um, we have another, I don't know, I'm in just in gradient mode. Like all the, the salvage colors I'm, I'm working on are all just kind of gradients. And there's a, a, a green tea dyed one that we're also working on. That's gonna be like a, a gradient from like natural all the way to like dark green matcha color. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, the traditional salvage IDs are a lot of fun, but I think we can have even more fun really jazzing ja jazzing them up uh, a little jazz bit hands. more. Jazz hands. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Bernard Welsh, have you ever done something with rainbow nep? We certainly have. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have something interesting. I don't have the sample yet for it, but we have some stuff coming for this fall small production stuff coming for this fall with uh colorful naps in mind oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um me master manny any more denim banners coming out there should be yeah we've been out for a while yeah huh? we have to yeah we've been out for i don't know if we've been out for a while but we need to do the empire state i don't right. think we ever got that one done yeah. um but yeah we'll uh put that on the list it's on the list. Um, okay, uh, Pedro writes, I wonder if one person makes all the samples like, oh, take these to Sherry. She makes all the samples. Everyone calls her Sample Sherry. No, no. we don't have Sample Sherry. It does go through, all of our samples go through like the same factory, factory like yeah. a, a bunch of different sets of hands. So, um, I would say that, yeah, a lot of, a lot of people in the factory also can work multiple positions. Like they know they know different machines, um, but I think the uh, yeah, that's it. We don't have we don't have sample sherry, but yeah. But we have a sample team. We have a sample perhaps, team, perhaps. I guess. Yeah. But they're the same well, team that makes everything else. Yeah. Carol and is our pattern maker. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. we do make some samples or some small productions uh, in our uh, building, yeah. like smaller factory within our building in Montreal. So that happens yeah. too. Oh, um, Ian M writes, Beza, did you happen to see the naked and famous pocket flasher poster on the Reddit raw denim uh, the other day? It unfortunately got removed, but it was a cool poster of flashers. I did not see it, uh, but I would have liked to see it. I have not been on Reddit in a while. When Reddit made those changes to like uh, third-party applications, I uh, I just stopped. You know, I liked the app that I was using, and I'm like, I'm not downloading another app. I've been on a uh, 
I guess the term is digital detox. I'm trying, like, I find... Healthier? Yeah, like, I, I just, like, I, I'm not really on Reddit anymore. I deleted Facebook. Like, I'm not on Facebook. I haven't been on Facebook in a long time. Oh, I haven't like, been on Facebook you know, in years. Even, like, Instagram, like, I'm on, but I'm not on. Like, I try to post, but I'm just not as active as I used to be. And, like, I do find myself, like, scrolling through stuff, and I'm really trying to cut that down because sometimes I feel it's, like, it's a big time waster for me. Like, I can get caught up in it, and I'm like, you know what? I got things to do. Put it down. And so, like, a lot of times, like, I'll just leave my phone in another room or another place, and I'm just, like, just keep it out of my way. Because, uh, for the best. yeah, I got other things to do. Um, but, yeah. But, yeah, like, so there was, you know, sometimes you get, like, um, the proof from the printer of uh, pocket flashers, and... Um, yeah, I've seen like a pocket flasher, like off the season. Off oh that, yeah, yeah. Like that season where like we printed pocket flasher together. Yeah. And it's in like one big, like proof. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I guess it's it's a poster sized yeah. uh, things and that do that does look good. Yeah, I wonder. Anyways, I can ask Brandon if we can make more of those proofs. If yeah. people might be interested in uh, like that a poster of all cool. the flashers, yeah, and we uh, just you know print uh, just a you know limited amount, and then yeah. you know if you're into that season's graphics, yeah. then you can get it. Um, yeah, uh, smoke rice. That was my poster. I hate they took it down. Why? I don't know why. Why would they take it down? Seems odd. You know, was there a naked lady? I don't somewhere? think so. Maybe you know. Sometimes, but uh, I'm, I'm not calling because... out any moderators or anything like that. But sometimes I feel like if the moderator doesn't feel like it's worthy content or something, like they're just going to take it down. And it's like, just leave it. If people have like left any comments or whatever on it, then clearly it's worthy content. Like, it's not spam content. Like, right, it's not like, right. you know. There's the one yeah. that you have to remove because yeah. it's spamming everybody. Yeah. Or, or like, like totally unrelated. Like, yeah. oh, look at my, you know, movie collection. And yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. that's not for yeah. this you know, right. but if it's like here's my movie collection of denim related movies, yeah, I'm fine with that. Or even if someone was like, oh, here are my boots or here are my watches, it's like sometimes there's like yeah, intersecting like internet, yeah. like intersecting. Uh, and then if interests. you want to keep talking about it, you can go to this thread or yeah. whatever. Like it's they said low effort. Uh, give me a break. Low effort. Maybe they're like, oh no, you need to post five pictures if you know. Reddit really, it's it's like all the like moderator like that. No, I don't. I, I don't. I don't speak or I've, know what the rules are. I've, but I've been on Reddit. Like it's there's a lot of crap posts. Like, yeah. I hate to say yeah. it, but it's not Ian, like Ian writes on the on the page. They say you have to have multiple photos and a huge description. Yeah, maybe it's like, okay. oh, here's a picture of my thing, and it's like, well, that's not that's not worthy content. Like, give me, who cares? Like, yeah, for real, that's just a like bizarre. What, like, what do you think? It's gonna clog up all the good content with. Yeah. People are posting a couple of threads a day. It's not like it's uh, it's not like it, all of Twitter is happening on that one, you know. Yeah, and uh, also like the popular one goes up or yeah, like yeah. whatever. So it's not like yeah. let the exactly and it's Reddit. Yeah. You know, you 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 click on what you like, what you don't like. Yeah. You know, you upvote it. Let so the community the community speaks. determines yeah. whether it's low effort or not low effort. Take that. That's Take That's that, raw denim moderators. <laughs> let everything go, and let the let the audience, let the public determine whether or not it is worthy content or not. Mm. Low effort, not low effort. It doesn't matter, you know. It yeah. really doesn't matter. Like, it's like anything. Like, you know, you can be the best singer in the world, but sometimes like a crappy, you know, a crappy artist is the one who's popular doesn't mean they're better or whatever. It just means they're more popular. So let the more popular things win. That's yeah. that's the way Especially I hear it. Especially with like a space like Reddit. Yeah. Like, what is the point yeah. of this Yeah. gatekeeping or whatever? Whatever. Repost it. <laughs> yeah. Just do it. Well, oh, no, you're going to get banned. I've, I've had friends who've been banned off of Raw Denim. And I, like, mm. for, for what? I don't know. Like, oh, I thought post. Well, <laughs> I had one... And I don't want to say because it'll uh, it'll oh, it'll be I obvious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, what they did was like, I'm like, that's fine. Like, like, well, mm -hmm. who cares? Like, yeah. uh, but I'm not the moderator, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I don't want to be the moderator. No. Um, uh, Smoke, I I posted a paragraph. It, 
I was also getting engagement. Yeah, so like, there's no point of taking something down like yeah, that. Yeah, especially when yeah. people like it. Yeah. What's the problem? Yeah. Pedro writes, wear that band like a badge of honor. <laughs> right. It's just not, I mean, yeah. For, if, you're, if you're trying to engage here, like, genuinely, there's no pro- I, I, I don't see a problem with it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, also, like, not, I don't, there's not a lot of, like, people who roast each other's, um, I remember when I was, like, in the streetwear forums when I was a, a kid. Boy, did people, like, the hype beast forums back in the day. You would get roasted if you, like, had a crappy fit. Just roast it. And, like, I feel like that was a uh, trial by fire. Like, mm. you know, okay. Well, internet like, was yeah. a much meaner space yeah. than it is yeah. now. Some of it is unwarranted, but some of it, it was just like, yo, it built up your strength. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Or, like, maybe, you know, it's it's a... It's a small picture of what you present, you know, like sometimes you need to be criticized to know what you're doing, you know. Yeah, what you're like, doing wrong. Yeah. Like, Not that it's wrong. Like if you're like the type of person who's like, I don't care what other people think, but yeah. I think if you're posting on the the things, yeah. like you, you are kind of curious to see what other people think, obviously, so... Like, sometimes it's, it's helpful, yeah. I think. Yeah. Even though I, it's ha- hateful. Look, but if you do it in a way that's humorous, like, there's some, there's something mm-hmm. about it, like, you know. Yeah, like a bro nudges. Yeah, like, we're, know, we're ribbing each other yeah, a little yeah. bit. Like, there's, there's that, and, like, obviously, like, just straight on, like, personal attack insults, that's not, you yeah. know, the way to go here. But, but then you, you're... you're that makes you like more intelligent to like recognize the difference yeah. between like oh this person is just making fun of me but maybe that's that's a, a actual like you know yeah criticism whereas like this guy's just being me right like, I don't need to care about that yeah. like uh mm. so anyways mm. uh do I miss those days I don't know <laughs> uh but sometimes I see f- some fits not just on like you know Reddit or. Uh, but, like, I, I still consume a lot of, like, what are you wearing content, mm. like, a- across the sphere. Just, I, I'm just curious. I just want to know what's going on. And, like, sometimes I see some plain, plain fits that are just, you know, they're, they're hmm, plain isn't the right word. There's There are fits that are, like, not very inspiring. And then there are fits that are just, co- like, it feels like cosplay. Hmm. right yeah and and people are like praising it and i'm like no this is yeah you, i don't you know, like the pra- yeah. like a praise like yeah. environment yeah. like i i'm sometimes on, i'm like, like are you not critical at all this is awful this is trash like what what are we doing here and, yeah and it's like it's fine to see that some people think that yeah but there's no way that everybody thinks that and yeah. everybody who i guess you know if you don't do if you have doesn't if you don't have anything nice to say don't say it at all kind yeah. of thing or like everybody's just, just kind of black stuff like, mm. except for the the people who are or are they faking it yeah. are they being like fake positive yeah that's that's probably pl- plausible too because like you have an out, out, like a horrible fit and someone's like oh this is amazing like you're just going to generate like anger from people who are watching it like what are you talking about that's yeah. terrible so yeah. there's probably that also, also. like i sometimes mm. like back in the days i would like not that long ago but like you know when i get into a new hobby like you know doing nails or like sewing mm. like i would go on these like forums but it's I don't want to, you know, stereotype this, but these are mostly women, obviously, sewing and, mm-hmm. you know, nails. And this, like, this environment is, like, over, overly positive. Oh, it feels and, like a therapy session. Yes, yeah. and mm-hmm. I really didn't get any value out of that, yeah. you know, space. Like, sometimes people post, like, some amazing things, yeah. and it's nice to see that, yeah. but... You know, sometimes people, like, well, a lot of the times people put up crap and everybody's like, oh my God, this is so amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't Instead of, and here. it's not constructive where it's yeah. like, oh, it's like, it's like, I don't have to dump on it, but to be like, that's Im- like amazing. And then also somebody does something amazing. You call it amazing. Yeah. It's like, that's just you say, hey, of- that's, that's great progress. Oh, I can see like where, how you've come up since, you know, yeah. yada, yada. Anyways, 
The internet yeah. is a weird place. It is a weird um, place. Stay off of it. Stay off the internet. <laughs> just just right here. The, that's uh, the... Junior, make the internet mean again. I'm not trying to make it mean. I'm just trying to have a little bit of... Curation? Like, like, yeah. Like... Curation and, like, actual commentary. Mm-hmm. Um, I rem- like, I grew up with Vice Magazine, and, like, I loved it when I was a kid. I loved Vice Magazine so much when I was a kid. And they had the do's and don'ts section. And sometimes you couldn't really tell what was clearly a do and what was clearly a don't. But I just liked the idea of just, you know, like, you know, some party and they're just taking pictures of like all the people who are there and like, this is clearly a do. Look how cool this guy is. And that is a don't. Don't be this person. This is, yeah. this person's well, too much. It's um, hard to do that yeah. when, when that person's like, right there looking at all the comments that comes in like i understand that like and it doesn't feel good when you're the one who's posting something up and somebody like criticize the hell out of it but at the same time Mm. toe for cobra it's weird to think that there's a place on the internet where people are too nice Mm, that's true that's true look there's all there's but um i think that i'm not saying be mean i'm just saying that uh in certain circumstances, like I guess in our in our like nature, maybe in our goodness of not wanting to be to write nasty, there are definitely people who write nasty things online. Let's be wrong, but I think like normal people, right, who are not angry and vindictive, it's hard for us to put into words online something that is critical because we don't want to offend anybody because that's not in our nature and so we don't and that can lead to things that maybe are you know uh mediocre at best Hmm. to be brought up to the level of this is great and then when you when that is like you know when that is put at the same level as greatness then you really diminish greatness. Yeah. So you don't have to criticize people's things, but you also don't have to, like, bump it up just for yeah. the sake of being nice. Like, yeah. you know, it, you you can do that. You can, like, have a productive, you know, space without being mean. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, that's all in that to say... Be nice. Be nice to each other. Oh, get so, off the internet. Or get off the internet. Um, but stay right here, tuned in live on the Naked and Famous Adam <laughs> so live it's stream. It's also on yeah. the internet. We have a we have a good back and forth here. I think uh, sometimes a heart is enough to support. I yes. think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, like, I don't think we need to roast each other like back in the day. Uh, I'm sure there are still forums. Like, I'm sure in the streetwear forums and things like that is probably still commonplace to just like mm-hmm. you know dunk on someone's like all one brand like clearly you're trying to show off fits um yeah i i do like when seeing like you know both comments exist yeah and you know not just like one side yeah the the fits that i dislike the most are the ones that are so basic looking but it's all like just the ultra I'm, i use the word premium very loosely here brands and mm. it's like Yo, check out these, you know, 90s inspired sunglasses that are made from the new designer brand that are basically a knockoff of a brand that still exists that still makes those sunglasses. And it's like, why did you buy those for $1,400 instead of buying the originals that are still made today for $300? Like, like you're wearing an ironic, like, 90s, like, Y2K style outfit, mm-hmm. and you're overpaying for it by a lot. Yeah. And it's not it's not a quality thing or anything. Mm-hmm. It's just you're why are you doing this? It seems so bizarre. Um that I'm like, and like also in terms of like the look, I'm like, you know, if not that, you know, we're dressing to attract one another, right? We, we a lot of, you know, we do, but we also dress for ourselves, right? But like sometimes I see these guys in like these these weird outfits and I'm like, women don't like this. Right? Like, you, like who... Like, if you're putting on, like, an outfit to, like, look good and, like, you know, maybe... Especially because it's, like, younger guys, you know, I feel like they're, you know, trying to attract a mate. And I think, like, this is a... 
no, like, guys don't think you're cool, and I don't think girls think you're cool. Like, this is, this is like a weird internet flex outfit for, like, yeah, the, well, for, a, like, a bunch of other internet forum guys. Yeah. And, yeah. and, like, it's not even about the style. It's just about how much money you put in and how, right. mu- and how, how you, you can show it, like, yeah. without saying how much you spend. But sometimes it's, like, it's not even, like, you are saying how much you spend because yeah. the logos are just so obvious. Yeah. And, uh, like, if no, you... No, but you have to make yeah. it obvious because you can't just be, like, you know, it's a yeah. picture. You can't, like, just... You know, like, oh, you have to be obvious. And that's why, like, you know, like, logo tees and mm. logo everything is just, you know, a, yeah. a thing. It's because it's people just want to show off how much they spend. And that's not... That's not fashionable. Yeah, that is, that has... I mean, I have to say that it, it that's always kind of been around. Yeah, yeah, right. 100%. But nowadays, especially with, like, the prices of everything yeah. and the quality yeah. going down yeah. like the, the value is really being removed because they're not being even creative they're yeah. not being like original they're just doing stuff that other people are doing but with the logo on it yeah. or with the, the you know yeah uh, anyways but some logos are cool looking Vital. yeah some logos are cool looking yeah and um, it's, it's fine if you like actually enjoy it but I don't know. I, I get a feeling that these people who are just enjoying the... They're enjoying flexing to other other yeah. forum guys. Yeah. And it's like, that's a weird place to be. And if it wasn't so... I'm not their accountant. They can spend their money however they want. Okay? Whatever. But if it wasn't so pricey, I guess I would be less critical. But I feel like back in my, back in my day, uh, streetwear, there were pricey brands but you know you, you like streetwear brands were selling $40 tees right like you would get away with like a $40 tee a hoodie and you know a, a pair of like selvage jeans and a pair of dunks and like that was and dunks were like the high price dunks for 300 bucks on the resale and they're not like 1200 or 1500 3000 dollars sneakers you know like yeah it's so i I'm, I'm just like you're taking a fit that was like from like for me, the word streetwear means it's like it's this, that's what they're wearing. That's what people, normal people, are wearing, right? Yeah. It's the street, right? And it's become like this weird amalgamation of like high fashion and just godly prices, um, and godly. yeah, godly, godly, god level prices. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pedro, I own a few giant logo articles of clothing. Just a zero skateboard hoodie, maybe one or two pieces. Can't think of right now. Moved away from them five plus years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, when you're younger, I think you know, especially in skate and street, like you know, you're you're buying a lot of designs, and some of the designs are m- like very yeah. much involved with like the logo, like the logo of the brand. Yeah. And um, that's that's fine because you're like that's part of you like we're not saying like graphics or graphics that involves the logos are all bad i think what we want to convey is that like don't spend so much money just so that you can show off how much money you spend on the internet for people who don't like who don't really yeah like especially for a fit that isn't like particularly like interesting like it's it's fine for like what one photo where you're like wow that's weird I'm like, yeah, but now you own the weird pants. You own the weird sweater. Unless like, you genuinely yeah, enjoy yeah, wearing yeah, them. Like, yeah. that's... Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, Cheddar Buttersworth. I wanted to get a sweatshirt from my university. Mm. The problem is you don't have a choice over the quality. Mm. You don't have a choice over the quality. That's true. I mean, they're going to use, like, you know, blanks or, you know, mm. maybe they'll use, uh, you know... Gildan or American Apparel yeah. or, uh, you know, yeah, just a variety, of Fruit of the Loom, yeah. you know, a variety yeah. of things yeah. like that. But, but that, I have to say that the crappy quality of university sweaters is part of the charm yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, and, and also it's kind of like, you know, you're not buying this for like, you know, to, like you, you're buying this because you you want something that, 
you know that you're a part of or yeah. you know that you want to represent so i think that's fine like i i have like you know yeah, t-shirts we... from like you know my college or whatever like that's just like it's yeah. re- not even worth yeah. like it's not like one of those cool vintage ones like they're just printed t-shirts but mm. i still have it yeah. like it's just part of my I, memory i like despite not being a member of the uh, illustrious uh, post-secondary education <laughs> um uh club i do enjoy um university and collegiate sweaters mm-hmm. there, I, there's a yeah. certain like i think it's the culture that surrounds yeah. it like it, it's it's I like, could wear a Harvard sweater, and everyone thinks I went to Harvard. Nobody thinks you went didn't. To did not go to Harvard. I went. To be fair, I went to Harvard. Yes. I always tell people I went there. Yeah. We, um, we, we went to MIT. I, yeah, we went to MIT and Harvard. Yeah. I, I attended graduation there. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've done both of those things, so uh, I'm not lying. <laughs> I I I, 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 I went MIT. to Harvard. Um, to be fair, all of you guys can go to Harvard. I. There's no restriction on it. You can just go. Um, yeah. And you can just pretend like... Just put on I, a sweater. You can put on a sweater and yeah. you can just, like, you know, get a coffee from the campus. To campus. be fair, you could probably put it on your resume. No, depending, don't do that. Don't depend, do that. Depending on what you're applying <laughs> for, nobody, nobody's going to call. Nobody's going to call Harvard and be like, hey, did uh, so-and-so... Att- I think some people would yeah. call. If you're yeah. trying to get, like, you know, if you're a brain surgeon... Maybe don't lie about it, but... Uh, You'll find out, yeah. If you're a, just, you know, some kind of position at, like, a if regular like, tech company, I don't think they're going to call. But you're risking that you are assuming that there's nobody who's the, around the same age as you that went to the same school or whatever. Although, mm. I mean, you don't know anybody. But they... they, they I mean, it's, it's... They can find out. So if you feel like you wouldn't have gotten the job if it wasn't for that degree, then don't lie about it. Okay. That's that's the bottom line. Like yeah. if they were going to find out, then they can find out. So yeah. don't do it. But, but if you know if it's a job that doesn't have anything yeah. to do with the degree that you got, then yeah. or that yeah. you're pretending to have gotten, then that's fine. Yeah. Based as life lesson pro tips, uh, lie about your credentials. <laughs> Is get through the interview, and as long as you know what you know, what you what you have to know, you're gonna be fine. I to think. be fair, like it does have a power. Like I remember, like you know, when we interviewed some people for like our you know job or position in Naked and Famous, like Brandon would never check the credentials. <laughs> I've never but, I've never checked the credential once. But it does like it does add to something to yeah. it. Sometimes if yeah. we went to like say Harbor, like it's like oh this guy must be smart. Yeah, but and that doesn't mean that you get a job, but it does give you like oh maybe this guy's really yeah, smart. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Burger King application, Harvard. <laughs> Boom, you're in. Um, this is a management position. Yeah, yeah I can uh, manage. I went to MIT School of Business. I can handle. I can handle <laughs> this. No problem. I'm gonna work my way up, become the general manager, and then. Boom. And then once you're the CEO, they're like, "Well, your resume said this." Like, look, guys, I work, what are you gonna do? Fire me? Uh, I don't know why, but I have to respect for people wearing Kirkland Signature logo wear. Yeah, those That's Kirkland signature sweatshirts popular. have been very popular. Yeah. I think everybody's yeah. kind of like had that ironic, like yeah. everybody's wearing logo tees. Like yeah. I'm very proud of yeah. my Costco membership. Right, but I like seeing um, local chain, whether it's uh, you know your local grocery store or you know sometimes I see like Bucky's t-shirts. Like we were out vintage like shirt hunting yesterday, and we saw a couple Bucky's t-shirts. And I'm like, I like this. I like it. Like if I if I saw like a, a, a if I'm from Ontario, if I saw a T-shirt that said Becker's on it, there's like a small chain of uh, convenience stores, I would wear a Becker's T-shirt. I like, um, so I wear a uh, my um, Saint Peter's oh, yeah, bagel T-shirt bagel. a yeah. lot because it it's a very you know blank with the graphic kind of tee, but. Yeah. I, I love the graphic yeah. and I love the bagels, so yeah. I just wear it proudly. Yeah. And yeah, I, I do like that, like the novelty, like the, you know, just because that's, that, again, it's the same thing with like colleges. Like mm. you're just, you're part of this community that appreciates something and right. maybe you make a friend because of it. Yeah. 
Cheddar Buttersworth, No Frills Canada has started to sell branded merch. I don't know if I'd sell... So, mm. like, a No Frills... Is it some, the yellow? Yeah, thing? yeah. Sometimes I feel like... Like, if Tim Hortons started doing it, I'd be like, nah, I'm good. I like, think Tim Hortons yeah. does it. Oh, there's, there's a certain... Once... Once you guess, measure, yeah. like... Yeah. I mean, I guess Kirkland I guess Kirkland is, is different. It is, it is, but it isn't. Because Kirkland is like, yo, we make everything. Like, it's kind of, kind yeah. of funny because, like, you could buy your peanuts... From Kirkland brand, you can also buy your lawn furniture, and you can also buy jeans. Yeah. Like and they, it, so there's something about that that's like, yeah, interesting. I think the yeah. logo sweatshirts, logo yeah. tees are like the different, like different from Kirkland jeans. Yeah, because it's not like it's about the brand already. Yeah. but but I don't know. Yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. yeah, like I don't want. Yeah, there's something well, like about. Becker's, where it's like a small, like very small chain of yeah. convenience stores versus like a 7 Eleven. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's yeah. the whole, you know, if yeah. you know, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Right. But, um, you know, like here, um, for a while, I think still, Trader Joe's grocery bag, like, you know, the w- one that you pay for, but like a tote bag with Trader Joe's um, yeah. thing, those were like really popular because Trader Joe's don't exist and like you know obviously like yeah. it's, it's like a sign of like i went to you, america you went to america and i yeah. found this amazing grocery store kind of yeah. vibe not that everybody who carries it is, is has been yeah. to trader joe's yeah. or even sometimes they don't even know what trader yeah. joe's is but yeah. it's uh it, it, it was kind of funny like i was like starting to see like trader joe's bags everywhere and it's like why is everybody have been to yeah. Trader Joe's? <laughs> but they were selling them here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's why it yeah. got trendy. Yeah. Um, Pedro, you need food? Boom. You need stuff? You need you need stuff? Boom. You need stuff? Boom. Kirkland has all... Be- they have... Kirkland does everything. Like I said, I, if I, I would love to do a Kirkland collaboration. L- absolutely. A thousand percent. I would do it. I want to make those yeah. naked and famous Kirkland jeans happen. They already have I've been jeans, saying that for they... years, by the way. Mm-hmm. At some point, some designer brand is going to get it. Just they're going to yeah. fandangle it somehow. But IKEA style. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely. I've been I've been a, a big fan of the good people at the Kirkland Corporation for uh, for a long time. Um, BD writes. I had to show my diploma and transcript. Like the diploma wasn't enough. And I had to show it at a place I was already working at for years when I was moving to full time. <laughs> wow, they really didn't trust you. <laughs> they have, that's some jerk move. Like, like you cannot. What are they like? Time. How dumb is that? Like they, they're you're working there and they're they're promoting you based on your work experience. Yeah, presumably. And it's, I'm assuming yeah. it's not like a licensed position. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's if like, it's a licensed position, yeah. I understand. Okay. But if, if it's you're just gonna like, be a doctor, yeah, okay, you know. got it. You need to have this paperwork understood. But if it's like anything else, that seems a little off. Yeah, uh, it's funny. Okay, um, guys, I want to get into snack time. Mm, okay, we've got a fun drink to share. Okay, um, old school. I'm just trying to toss some jeans somewhere. Um, just jeans all over the place. Uh, this is an old school. Uh, uh, I was really into like, I've been, I've been, I wanted to learn more about soda fountain, like old school American, uh, like fountain sodas. Mm. And, uh, this is kind of like that. It's very trendy in Japan right now that like old school, like Showa style, like, um, like, you know, melon soda. Yeah. Is that a thing in America? No, it is not a thing. So it's like a overly like colored drink yeah. with maybe sometimes a float like that's yeah. when like we got american culture like really like yeah. into our like lives so this soda is like 80s japanese style yeah. vision of american pop but like we never i don't feel like we ever had this right mm. but it, it's, it, it's such an yeah, american yeah. color but though. but it's such a throwback like japanese 80s style and mm. uh it's made for the good people at suntory they, they make the whiskey um, they also make a lot of drinks here, but, uh, this is an old school 80s throwback soda, uh, and I thought it was nice, so yeah. we're gonna give it a try Very. here. Um, we should have the yeah. little cherry. That's right, we're missing that. Mm-hmm. Or a little scoop okay. of ice cream. But, but, so, yeah, this one doesn't say what 
Well, it says blue cider. Blue cider. Yeah. So I, we'll find out what that Ooh. is. Oh, this... it's very remnant yeah. flavor. Oh, smelly. Ramune. Yeah, that's ramune. If you've ever, if you don't know what ramune is, if you've ever seen, if you've ever been to an Asian grocery store in, in anywhere, they pretty much all have it nowadays. When I was young, it was, I remember it, like, first seeing it in Asian grocery stores. Like, it's like this weird glass bottle where you have a marble on the top that you have to, like, pop it down to get the soda. And it's just kind of like a cream soda flavored drink. Cream soda? I feel like it's like a cream soda. It's it's such a distinctive yeah. flavor, and I call I can only describe it as a ramen yeah, flavor. Yeah, it, so. it is a very it's its own thing. But I would say maybe the closest thing is that it is like a cream soda in a mm. way. Maybe less That's a lot not creamy, but Ooh, yeah, look at that. this is very eighties. I love it. Yeah. Japanese eighties style it's right here. It's very like um, summery too. Yeah. So right. this is Cheers the, everybody. I like it also because they just call it pop. Pop. What did Blue. they say? Since, oh, since, yeah. since 1977. Suntory pop. Uh, city pop vibes. Absolutely. This is exactly it. Uh, okay. Let's right. let's check it out. There we go. Everybody. A little ching ching. Try this out. Ramune. Mm. Ramune. Yeah, it's like cream soda without the cream. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Mm. Anyway, it, it's it's like um, it's a little bit like Seven Up type of soda, yeah. like a little citrusy. Little citrusy. Mm. But it does definitely has this distinctive taste. That, yeah. that is not Seven Seven Up. I like it. It's very summery. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Ramen, I think mm. like the charm is really that marble. Yeah. Like just that that bottle. That experience that of opening bottle. it up. Yeah. So I don't know. It's like it's it's a little bit disappointing without that. Mm. Uh, I need an explanation of cream soda without the cream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ian, go to your local Asian grocery store. Um, I'm sure you got one. Every every city's got one. And look up, look for Ramune. I'm going to Google it. I'm going to show you the bottle. You're going to find it and you're going to try it. Um, yeah. And don't get the flavored ones, like a pink one or nothing. Just yeah. get the blue one. Let me just pull it up. Ramune. They do a lot of. Uh... Here we go. You're going to look up this product right here. So. Uh... They come in a lot of different colors, different, they all, I think, basically taste the same. Though, in Japan, sometimes they have, like, novelty flavors of these no, things. No, all these are oh, different yeah. flavors. Oh, yeah, right, melon and, sure. Yeah, no, I've just seen, get the classic just get the clear light one. blue. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a lychee one. And you basically, you pull off the top, there's, like, this little plastic topper piece, and then you got to push it down and hold it down. The key is to hold it. Don't just push it. Push and hold, because otherwise the liquid is going to... Uh, spray um, but uh, yeah there's like a little glass marble up top it's odd to drink because you kind of have to balance the marble in between these little it makes divots these sounds. yeah it clings around yeah, ramune okay. it's its own flavor um, and yeah it'll be like two or three bucks a bottle um, a little pricey i suppose three dollars yeah That's they're kind of pricey, pricey but uh i mean i guess you have to like ship this glass bottle right yeah. and uh it's just something fun to enjoy they do have like dry candies these are like powder candies that have that ramune flavor um but yeah you can you you'll definitely find it all they all they all the grocery stores all the asian grocery stores have it these days i find so there you have it that's ramune Give it a shot. You'll enjoy it. If you can find this stuff, I would I would recommend it. It's a summary drink. Yeah. I'm going to give this out of 10. <laughs> I say that it's a 6.8. Mm. Yeah, I agree with It that. doesn't get a higher mark because I feel like I would only want this in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, and uh, it's not like... Oh my god, this is the best flavor yeah. ever. It is just, it's nice. Yeah. It's, it's... And 
it's fun to enjoy. I like the color. If you have it in like an old school glass like this or like a, a soda fountain glass, I think you can enjoy it. It'd be fun to have with ice cream. Um, Chris says, I've yeah. got lemon flavored protein powder. It's pretty awesome. That does really? not sound good. That's interesting. <laughs> um, uh, they sell those at world market stores as well. Uh, mm. Topher Cobra writes, I don't know what that is, but that sounds interesting. World market, you get everything. Sounds world. like a fun store. Um, whiskey denim with a Suntory collab, Rin L writes. We have, I, I would like to somehow incorporate whiskey. Whiskey. Into, yeah, I think, it's such a yeah. cult, like denim guys love whiskey. Yeah. Whiskey is something that you appreciate and it gets better with age. Yeah. Same so it all, jeans. Yeah. all those stories it, it come does together. Have that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. Everybody, we're going to wrap it up right there. Thank you very much, as always, for joining us, tuning in to the Naked and Famous Denim weekly live stream here on YouTube. Hit the like button before you go. Hit the subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. We're going to see you guys next week. As always, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Do something nice for yourself. Grab a Ramune and uh, do, or buy two and give one to a, a loved one or a friend. Do something nice for somebody else. Mm -hmm. We'll see you guys there uh, next week. Peace out. Stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool, everybody. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>